Hello and welcome to Local Food Online Sales How To. Um, I, my name is Patty Cantrell and I'm with the New Growth Community Development Corporation in West Central Missouri. And we are home to the Start Here Business Acceleration Network. It's a lot of partners in our region working together to build th a thriving region. And one of the main areas we're looking at is how we can build up our local food farmers and markets not just farmers markets, but also wholesale markets. And um, we have a great resource in Katie Nixon, who is a farmer and is very involved in the Kansas City Food Hub and works at our partner organization, West Central Missouri Community Action as the food systems director there. Um, and so we're excited to have Katie bring some information to you today and we wanna stay in touch, we'll follow up. There's some great things coming up like our Farm to Fork Summit in February going to have a lot of great resources there. And um, again, I want to also mention, you know, we're, we were going to save time for questions, uh, questions later. So put them in the, in the question session for us. And um, we'll also uh, have a poll for you shortly. So I'll give it over to Katie right now. Well, hello, everybody. <laughs> um, so we're going to get started here, but um, before we do, it looks like we um, have just a few participants and I think we were going to do a poll, but I think what would work best is um, in the chat box, if you could indicate uh, your um, organization that you work for um, or your business name, and then um, maybe where which uh, city or state you're from if you're from out of the country what country you're from um, and then what your occupation is so that i get a feel for um, where to direct my comments um, so okay i'm going to share my screen here i think there we go <laughs> Okay. Hooray. Okay. Um, and now I can't see the chat, but that's okay. We'll look at that. There we go. Lansing, Kansas. All right, Bill. Thanks for adding that in. Um, are you a farmer? There we go. Yeah. Okay. Well, well let's get started here. Um, as Patty introduced me, I am um, a farmer and a food systems director, and I also work with Kansas City Food Hub. Um, my uh, expertise, I guess, would be in small farming, um, where I worked as an extension agent for Lincoln University for about seven years, and um, we developed the preliminary baseline for our food hub development, um, which is now a fully functioning business with 20 grower members. Um, I also have been running a farm with my husband um, for almost 10 years now. We are a certified organic farm in Wheatland, Missouri. Um, and then I have been running the food systems program at West Central for uh, about five years. So um, we're going to move on here with the presentation. Um, so I want to give some context just of the work that I do, and then we're going to go into some real specifics about online sales and how to, um, but we are building a, a regional, we are focused on a regional effort to build local food businesses in rural areas. Um, a lot of times I think there's a disconnect between what can be produced in a rural area um, with the markets themselves. And so we really try to help build and bridge um, the market demand with what's being grown in the region. Um, so we have opened up new markets for producers and have moved thousands of dollars worth of food to new markets for farmers in the region. And we hope to build, uh, to help that to build a more robust um, infrastructure because one of the issues is actually moving that food around can cost quite a bit of money. So um, we are working on that infrastructure. And we do that uh, with collaborations um, and specifically uh, Farm to Fork is an opportunity for us to really, um, I guess, emphasize the work we do and to um, celebrate it. So in February is when we, it'll be our third annual. Um, unfortunately, it will not be in person this year, but it will be virtual. Um, and hopefully we may even get a wider audience um, out of that, but it'll be in February, the first three Tuesdays in February, 
um, from three to five in the afternoon. Uh, we'll have a plenary session with some breakouts and it's a really great opportunity to learn about what's going on in our region and be inspired by some of the food system work happening in Missouri and Kansas. Uh, we work on some pretty big projects in our food system program, um, the Beginning Farmer Development Project. Uh, we're helping those farmers scale up and get access to markets. And then our local food promotion program project is working on the food value chain up and down the I-49 corridor. Um, and another thing that we really um, try to do is tell our, our farmers stories. Um, so, all right, cool. I see here in the chat, we've got some entrepreneur, an entrepreneur student from UMKC. Right on, right on. My um, mom got her law degree at UMKC. She's one of five women in her class, so that's pretty cool. Um, and, okay, especially catering operation. Um, and right on. Okay, so um, let's move on with our presentation. Um, E-commerce, you got to do it. I mean, there's no other way, you know, before it was like, if you don't have a website, you don't exist. Now, if you don't have an online store, you basically don't exist. So um, Barn to Door is uh, one of the um, platforms we're going to talk about today. But uh, one of the headlines on their website is that one in three Americans ordered food online last month. That is up like exponentially. I think uh E-commerce amounted for something like 10 to 15 percent of online sales for grocery sales in um, early 2019, and it was growing. It was definitely a growing number of people shopping online. But obviously, um, COVID changes changed things very, very quickly. Um, and so the projection, you know, that was going like this, suddenly popped up, and um, everybody was online trying to order. Um, and so uh, we were lucky, my farm uh, was lucky in the sense that we were actually moving away from going to farmers markets and focusing on our online sales in 2019. So we were well positioned to be um, accepting online orders and having that system up and running because it, it is a system. I mean, you have to really work on building a, um, a platform that customers are um, can easily use, but more importantly, that you can easily use as an entrepreneur, because the back end is just as important as the functionality for your customers. So um, the Fair Share CSA Coalition uh, is an organization, a nonprofit that's been doing some great work for farmers um, in terms of the online platform um, analyzing. Uh, they uh, have this uh, spreadsheet that they've put up um, and comparing all the different platforms for small farmers. Um, and I will be talking mostly about farming um, in terms of the online sales, but uh, they could be translated to other businesses as well. Um, so that's a, a good resource there if you wanna dive deeper into what some farmers are saying about each of the platforms. Um, I was kind of surprised that Barn to Door got such uh, the lower rating that it got, but um, I guess I'm not because of the price. Um, but they have actually improved quite a bit since this, uh, reading was done a couple of months ago. So um, I wanted to share that resource. Um, and today uh, we're gonna be talking about um, Barn to Door, Square, and also local food marketplace. So um, we also did a webinar, New Growth and West Central together did a webinar on um, taking your food online. And in there, uh, we have farmers talking about each of their platforms and how they liked them. Um, so that is a recording on YouTube that you can go and watch. It's uh, available. It was done in April. Um, and so we covered uh, WooCommerce, Grace Cart, Bar Barn to Door, Square, Square Space, Local Food Marketplace, and Shopify in that one. So um, the three platforms I'm going to talk about today, like I said, um, will go from easiest to advanced. And... Uh, We'll, go, we'll talk about Square, Barn to Door, and Local Food Marketplace. Okay, so um, Square is a, a really, really easy to set up. Um, it uh, is basically generic. It's a generic web store. It's very secure. Um, you can actually build a website from Square, or um, you can also uh, you know, have it integrated into your own website. Um, I believe the cost is a percentage of your sales, but there are also advanced settings, you know, that famous upgrade button, you can always choose a higher plan. Um, 
it it can feel very generic. Uh, most of the Square websites I've seen are um, very static, and um, like you can see, this one in on the screen is uh, another farm's web page, and they don't have any pictures. You can definitely put pictures on, but they didn't put pictures up there, so um, you know that makes it sort of boring for the consumer. Um, but that's not to say you can't make it look nicer. Definitely, if you put pictures on, it'll look, it'll look a lot nicer. Um, and it's not very customizable. So another farmer that I work with uh, had a Square store. You know, they were scrambling to keep up with online demand at, in, during at the beginning of COVID. And so they have quickly got a Square store together and throughout the season just fumbled around with it a lot and decided to move to Barn to Door as a platform instead because of the way that it helped them be organized. Um, we, uh, our farm looked into the online store and we do have a Square account because I think Square is a really easy to use point of sale device as well. You know, those Square readers, you see them all over the place um, in coffee shops or at farmer's markets. Um, they have a really nice um, platform to use. It's very uh, user friendly, um, but this is kind of what the back end looks like when you're building your item library to go up on the web store. Um, and in terms of reporting, which I like to see the reports, um, we're a certified organic farm. So reporting and keeping track of our records is a really big part of our farm. And it's nice when um, the tools you use can integrate into the things that you need them to do. Um, this is an example of a farmer's market we did uh, last year in April. Um, I can go to Square at any time and look at those reports and analyze them. You can see that on the left side of the screen, there are lots of ways to recategorize um, the, the um, sales for that day. Um, and it helps me understand. I can even look at the whole year um, at different items and we even do it with our cash. Um, and we're kind of getting, I'm getting a little bit off topic here, but this is, um, if you are a vendor at a public square, it's really nice to be able to keep track of your sales in this way. And so even cash sales, we entered into the Square app um, at the point of sale, and we were able to analyze our sales at the end of each day and know um, kind of how the day went. Uh, so in terms of user friendliness, I give Square a, a big thumbs up. In terms of um, customize, custom, customizability, is that worse? Um, I give them, you know, maybe a five because it really is kind of a generic platform. Okay, so um, this is the platform that we use on our farm um, for our online sales. And um, I was hesitant at first because of the price tag uh, for the for the store. So I think, you know, you have to sort of decide if you're just starting out, you know, you may want the fanciest model, but you might have to choose something simpler while your business is um gains more traction and momentum, and you can justify um, uh, spending the money on a, on a fancier platform. It has lots of tech support and onboarding. Um, I basically gave them my list of products, and they populated them all on the website, which was a ton of time that I didn't have to do it because it was right in the middle of the season that we did it. Um, so that was great. Um, they are constantly adapting to the needs of their customers. So they check in with us as farmers and say what's working, what's not working, and then they take that back to their team and they decide, you know, prioritize what they're going to work on to fix and make better. And so they have done a lot of great feature upgrades since we've participated for the last year. Um, they also have some good customizable features for specifically for farm products like meat, where you don't necessarily know, um, you're not going to list, like if you have 10 different roasts and they're all different sizes, you don't necessarily want to list every single roast as an individual item. You just want to list a roast. And so then they can make a deposit and, um, and then they can, uh, you know, basically once you pick out whichever roast they're going to get, then it charges their card for the exact amount of that poundage. And I'll show you that in a minute to make it make a little more sense. Um, it's pretty adaptable uh, to my needs in terms of my products there are a few things that are annoying, but I'll get to those in a second. Um, and the the back end organization, like downloading the spreadsheets for the sales, is is pretty great. Um, the cons: a barn door has seen a like exponential increase in their customer base, and so 
they have had a lot of turnover in the last year and um, have been trying to hire a lot as well. And so I feel like their customer service was not as good this year, you know, towards the end of the year as it had been. And I think that was just because they were overwhelmed. Um, It can feel expensive sometimes. I believe it's $70. No, excuse me. It's $50 a month. And so our average sales a week um, in peak season is $400. And, um, you know, so for me, that's okay. But if your sales are, you know, around $100 a week, you're only like $400 a month, then $50 can feel a little expensive. Um, So keep that in mind. There's also no sales tax integration at the moment. They're working on it, I've heard, but it's taking them quite a while. (laughs) So, um, you know, you got to figure out that sales tax. And I still am kind of a little confused about how Missouri tracks that or wants us to track that. Um, we at the farmers market we would collect sales tax on top of the price just like every other business out there um, and then remit that sales tax um, to the state in this case it has to be integrated into our price because um, I'm not, I can't get it to work at the in the cart um, and it's not housed inside my website so if someone goes to my website and wants to go shopping they get taken out into the barn to door app which is um, I don't know. It's either a con or a pro. I'm not really sure. There's some interesting features about that. I'll talk about that in a minute. So um, the uh, this is our our site on Barn to Door. Um, you can see some of the features. Uh, there's a um, at the top. There's a banner um, that kind of gives the customer a little baseline of who you are in case they did not come to that website through your via your web to the store via your website, they'll get a little bit more information from that banner. You can also put sales. We've done sales banners up there and those are pretty popular. Um, You can change the color of that banner. So that's a customizable thing at the top there. Um, And then of course they can always go back to your website um, via that link there. And then one other feature that I like about it is that the customers can sort via the categories because in the spring we have I don't know, 50 to 60 different plants for sale on our website. And if someone's looking for produce and not plants, they can pick that and they can filter out. So it's pretty user friendly on that end. And we have not had really any customer complaints. Um, there's a couple of times when maybe the app hasn't been functioning properly and, um, you know, they were upgrading or something when the customer was shopping and um, something happened. But you can see down on the bottom in that little, uh, on the bottom right, there's a little, um, chat icon and so barn door staff is during business hours chatting with customers if they're having issues and i've had um, customers ask questions with that chat and that barn to door staff member will text me and say hey i've got a customer asking about sold out duck eggs do you think you'll have more next week and then they'll let that customer know so that's pretty cool that doesn't happen very often for us but it's nice to know that someone's fielding those questions from customers so they're not bouncing off your page um so, yeah, and you can, um, you know, update your inventory throughout the week. There's no, like, off time where you can't mess with your inventory um, for customers. So, okay, we'll go to the next page. So, um, the other thing about Barn and Doors, you can have multiple pickup locations um, and multiple days for pickup. There's no restriction on how many of those you can have or how many places you can have. Um, to my knowledge, I haven't, I don't know how I've tried more than five, so maybe there is a limit, but um, you can see here we have three different pickup locations on two different days, the farm pickups on Fridays and the other two pickups are on Saturdays, so the customer can pick one of the locations and then that's where their product will be picked up. Um, supposedly they could pick two different locations, but nobody's ever done that before, so um, I don't know why they would. Um and then, like I said, the back end is really important as well. So this is what I see on my side. The customer does not see this. You can see up the top um, all the different places where you can go to work on the um, on the storefront. But um, this is where I look at my orders um, and where I can download the spreadsheet where the orders will be listed. I get a pack list, which basically just lists all the items that I need to pick, and then I get a excuse me, I get a pick list, which lists all the items I need to pick. And then I get a pack list, which customizes the the customer's name and their contact information and what they ordered. So that when I go to pack each 
um, farmer bag or box, I can um, look at that and make sure I'm getting the right things in their boxes. Um, and you can see here, those are two different days. If you had multiple, like if you had four or five different days you were packing, you can you would see them generated in each day there. Um, and this is the dashboard. I guess one thing I'd say about Barn to Door is it's not really great on running reports. This is about as sophisticated as their reporting system goes. I can go and um, into the orders section and say I want all the orders from November 15th to, you know, November 18th and or let's say April 15th to November 15th, and it will I download that into a very clunky spreadsheet. But I can't. Uh, what I can't do on Barn to Door is say, you know, how many carrots did I sell in 2020? Uh, how many bunches of carrots did I sell in 2020? That they don't have that ability at the moment. So I've asked them to work on that. And who knows what kind of priority, <laughs> if other farmers have asked for that or not. But I have heard that they're trying to work on their running reports on the back end there. So um, you can do promos. So that's something that we did. We also did had a Wix um, store on our Wix website, Wix.com. And that one was very clunky. And uh, it was, I think, $300 a year. Maybe it was a little less, but um, it it was really clunky on the back end. And uh, I had a, a really hard time with it. And I wasted a ton of time trying to get orders together. So thankfully, this system with more than 10 orders like we were having 40 orders during the spring when COVID was peaking. And so, you know, trying to get 40 orders together while, you know, having a clunky back end system can just eat up so much time. Um, so you got, you can think about that in your pricing is like, is this going to save me a couple hours? Well, what's that worth to me? Um, so, and there was at one point last year in 2019, when we signed up for Barn to Door, I was a little concerned because, you know, they were really pressing me hard to to do the sell. And I was like, hmm, I wonder if they're desperate. <laughs> I don't want them to go under, you know, like while I'm using them as my platform. But it turns out that um, I don't have to worry about that anymore because now it's uh, they're going gangbusters and doing really well. So that's good. They also have a lot of farmer support on their website. Um, they do uh, free farmer conferences and um, tutorials there. So I will say they're a pretty supportive business for farmers. I mean, that's their business, so they better be. But um, I have overall um, satisfaction with, with Barn to Door. And this is what I was talking about with the bulk pricing, or excuse me, with the varied pricing. You can also do bulk pricing too. Um, but basically the customer will go in and um, choose that item and then um, – your item will have a, a weight range um, so that they know that the customer knows it's not going to go over this price and it, it won't go under this price, but they basically put a deposit down on that item. And that would be where, um, you know, it might be um, a roast or a whole chicken um, or even, um, you know, cauliflower, which this says cauliflower. I, I can usually work it so that it's, it comes to a pound because I have enough pieces to choose from to, to make it that, but um, you could also do it that way if you wanted to. And then you enter the price later when you know what the price is. Um, and then it charges that customer's card. Um, so that's pretty handy, especially for the meat producers out there. Okay, so we're gonna switch here and talk about um, local food marketplace. Um, and so, I am the president of the board of the Kansas City Food Hub, which is a cooperative of growers. We're about 20 growers strong right now. Um, and so we're all working, working together to sell into the wholesale market. Um, and this year has been totally different. So we now have a retail market as well. Um, but essentially it's all wholesale for all intents and purposes because even though the Food Hub is selling retail farm boxes, the farmer themselves is still selling to the to the food hub at a wholesale price. Um, so the food hub was working with spreadsheets um, before pre-local food marketplace, or yeah, pre-local food marketplace. And um, quite honestly, it was taking up probably five hours of our staff members time just to organize the spreadsheets for the orders every week. And so we decided to invest in local food marketplace. And I say invest because it is expensive. <laughs> I think it was a $4,200 investment upfront. 
and that, and every year um, it's actually close to that. I think it's about three hundred and seventy dollars a month. Um, but when you're working with 20 different growers um, and trying to get everybody's availability and, um, you know, 20 different buyers all making different kinds of orders. Um, and then now we have the neighborhood farm shares, which is another 300 customers. You really need something more sophisticated. Um, and like I said, these could go in steps. Like if your business starts off with Square or something like Squarespace, which is also kind of a more simple um, platform, you can always upgrade. It will take time, just like everything else. But um, you know, this is probably the you know, this is the advanced model right here is Local Food Marketplace. And there is other more complicated software above Local Food Marketplace that um, would even be more expensive and more complicated. Um, but it is a it is a pretty um, robust set of um, online systems, very customizable to your business. When you get onboarded, they basically build you what you need on your homepage. Um, the farmers are updating their own inventory in local food marketplace, so they each get a login. Um, and with their own farm, and then they're the ones in charge of making sure that their availab availability is up to date so that when the buyers come on the website, they see what is available. And so if you don't update your availability, then obviously you're not going to sell anything. So that's on, your, on you as a farmer. Um, except for, of course, we have Amish farmers, and so our staff then updates the availability for them. Um, it, like I said, it's, it's got a, it's a robust um, software and it also has a great back end uh, reporting system and that we use a lot for understanding our sales and our books and looking back at the year and the month or the week or whatever it is uh, to sort of analyze how the business is going. Highly functional and has lots of add-ons and when I say add-ons they have like inventory tracking our food hub does not keep inventory, so we did not purchase that add-on. They have um, traceability tracking for food safety. Um, they have um, also a, a routify. Rout 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 it's a routing <laughs> add-on that you can purchase, and it'll basically, like if you're doing a lot of deliveries, it'll help you sort your route out. Um, so there's a lot there to sort of sort through. It's got a QuickBooks integration feature. Um, again, the cons, it's pretty expensive <laughs> for what it is. I mean, not what it is, it's, it's probably priced reasonably, but if you are a small farm, I would not suggest starting out with local food marketplace. Um, if you are farmers working together or businesses working together, then maybe you would uh, choose this software. Um, it's a little complicated to set up and understand. We have staff that still doesn't fully understand the whole functionality of it. So we're, we're constantly working on um, building it to the degree that it's most useful. Um, and we found some issues with selling our neighborhood farm share CSA style um, uh, product. So we're actually looking at pulling away that particular product and putting it on a different platform, but keeping the, um, uh, the whole integration of how the farmers are um, selling and buying through local or selling out through local, local food marketplace. This is the storefront here. Um, hopefully they make you hungry, a little cheese in the afternoon. This is a local producer who does um, some fantastic raw milk cheese. Um, anyways, I got distracted there. Um, so this is the, the storefront here for the dairy and eggs section. Um, this is where our wholesale buyers make orders. And you can see if I was logged in when I took this um, screenshot, you would actually see the prices there. And then if I clicked on one of these uh, drop down menus, I would see how many were available. Um, so that's what the customer sees. And then up here, uh, you can pick a delivery uh, period. And um, basically, there's an order period and it closes at a certain time. And then all the farmers are sent automatic messages about what their pick list is for the week, and then they have obligation to get it to a, um, a sub hub that we've designated to them um, at the beginning of the season. This is the back end here. I've uh, blacked out uh, private information for the business, but um, you can see that it sort of gives you an idea of uh, a snapshot of the week, of the year. If I were to scroll, if you could, 
if I were scrolling down, this was the actual web page, there'd be quite a bit more information below um, about what was happening for the week and the products available. And then this is our, um, I can also go to the producers tab um, and look at all my producers. I can see where their aggregation location is. I can see um, if they have any orders during the period. I can see what their revenue was and I can see what their yearly revenue was. We use this a lot um, when running reports to for our annual meetings so that we can give everybody an overview of uh, what was sold where and who sold what. <laughs> So again, like I said, the back end is uh, very robust. Um, this is all the different items I could run a report on. Um, and I use the sales one most of all, because um, it's the, I mean, that's basically what we're doing with it is we're, we're selling stuff, but it has a lot more functionality than we probably use. Um, and so there are other, as we grow, as our business grows, as the food hub grows, I believe that the functionality and our understanding of the functionality will grow as well. Um, this is my personal family, Greengate Family Farm page where I go into local food marketplace and I can update my availability here and add items um, and add pictures to my items and add descriptions. Um, and then I can also come here and look at my pick list for the week. I can look at, um, I can also run reports just for my farm if I want. So the farmers themselves are able to run their own reports. Um, they can't run reports on the whole business, but they can run reports on what has been ordered from their farm. We can also enter the, um, the tags that they're supposed to put on the boxes that are ordered so that our drivers know which box goes, like they can grab the box that says XIO3, and then they know that's going to one customer. And um, so our farmers get that information through this website as well. So logistically, it's a very handy tool. <laughs> um, some things to keep in mind for online. Uh, if you don't offer free shipping, you should. <laughs> you, you should consider it anyways. So um, we don't ship anything because all of our stuff is fresh produce. But if you are considering shipping items um, in an online store, just build that into your pricing and try to make it so that um, it doesn't feel so painful to um, to ship the products because people are just they got spoiled by Amazon and all the other companies. And so if you don't offer free shipping, a lot of times people bounce off your page when they get to the cart. Um, so if, try to try to build that into your pricing. Um, and that would be the, my advice there. Also taxes, like if you can't collect sales tax at, at, in the, at the end in your cart, then try to build that into your pricing because it adds up. I mean, you know, for Kansas City, uh, sales tax is like 6% uh, on food, on retail, it's like nine or ten percent, and so ten percent of your sales is, you know, a big chunk of money. As is the credit card fees. <laughs> so most people are paying with credit cards in the online system, and that's three percent, a minimum of three percent of your price. Um, so if you think about taxes and the cost of shipping, and you know your credit card fees, in the end, it's like, wow, I'm only getting like seventy percent of the price I put on my website. So think about that when you're pricing your items. Um, and then door-to-door uh, -door delivery. I put that on there because when we first started our web page, our web store with the online system, we're like, yeah, we're going to deliver all these things and we're going to offer that to our customers. And we ended up spending two hours delivering on a Saturday. And I was like, ah, I don't want to do this. <laughs> so, um it didn't work for our attitude, but it might work for yours. Um, you don't have to offer door-to-door -door -door delivery as long as you have a decent um, distribution place. Um, if you don't live in the area, like we use my brother's driveway, but in Kansas City, which is two hours from our farm, um, but you could pick a, a, a public location and say you're going to be there for two hours and you know that's where you pick it up. Uh, and people respond okay to that. Um, if you absolutely need to arrange delivery, like you can do it, but... I really think people need to think about door-to-door -door delivery. Um, sort of goes with free shipping. It's like, okay, well, this can be my whole business, <laughs> just delivering stuff. Um, and then thinking about how the uh, online um, shopping platform integrates with the tools you use for your business. Um, I use a lot of spreadsheets. And so, you know, obviously that's a universal 
thing where when you're downloading information, when I'm downloading the information from Barn to Door, it goes into a spreadsheet and then I can just populate my pick list and integrate it in with my CSA because um, that is one thing that Barn to Door doesn't offer our CSA, which is the subscription box service. I do that separate from the website. There are websites um, and sh online stores that will help organize your CSA and your harvest list um, electronically and integrate into your online sales, but um, I haven't worked with those systems, so I couldn't speak to those. Uh, I hear Harvey, though. Harvey uh, is one of the systems that are popular with CSA growers. Um, but yeah, like integrating with QuickBooks or, um, you know, like a, your routing systems, think about that as well. Um, so, and then, um, we're here to help. We have a mentor program for beginning farmers. Um, and if you go to the growinggrowers.org website slash uh, farmer mentor program, our, we have a list of fantastic farmers. I think there's about 15 of them who are paid to help our beginning farmers scale up. And some of them do have online e-commerce experience. Um, one of them is the speaker at our, um, two of them are speakers, were speakers on our new growth um, online sales webinar. Um, one was developed a WooCommerce site, which is an open source um, site that you need maybe an expert to help you uh, develop. But once you get it up and running, it's, there's no cost to it. Um, and then, uh, except for the credit card fees, obviously. And then, um, so we have help there. And then we also technical assistance. Um, I am more than happy to field phone calls or, um, or help other farmers get their stuff up and running. And then the platform companies themselves, Barn to Door has probably provided me with over 20 hours of technical assistance since we started with them. So um, don't be afraid to use that because that's what they get paid for. And my contact information is there. Um, and I guess I will see if you guys have any questions. Oops. Okay. I don't know if people are going to, if you want to speak, I think you can just unmute yourself. Does it, can you list the last slide? Oh yeah, sure. Um, Just come down here. Okay. Um, so I see. Does who on the call has the online an online platform? I think if you unmute, can, Patty, can they unmute themselves? I just worked on that, um, yeah. and I just unmuted everybody. So. Okay. <laughs> and yeah, I'm working on that. So I think we can actually see everybody. Um, but um, I've allowed you to talk, but you have to unmute yourself. Looks like Adam did that. Can you all just unmute yourself? But you are allowed to talk now. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me share that last slide. I thought I shared it, but I guess I didn't. Um, Okay, there we go. <laughs> so I saw somebody had an ice cream truck. Do you guys do any online sales? Uh, Katie, I, I think I have a question if you don't mind. Sure, uh, go for it. Do you see a lot of uh, new entrants um, in the KC Metro in this industry? Or is it more established uh, farms that have been going for a while that are just looking for um, online sales tools? Um, I guess I want to know a little bit more about your question. So you're wondering if there, there's more um, need for new online sales platforms? Is that what you're asking for farmers? I'm, I'm just asking, are there, are there new farms popping up in the metro area or okay. more established farms that are, are seeking these tools? Yeah, so it's a mixed bag. I mean, there is a lot of interest in urban farming, um, and I've seen some new businesses emerging there with indoor growing and hydroponics, and then also, you know, vacant lot growing. Um, 
I see those businesses sort of pop up and also disappear quickly. Um, but some of them have been around for a while and are doing quite well. Um, in terms of interest, I think COVID has piqued a lot of people's interest in starting farms. Um, there is, so the Food Hub feasibility study found um, $1.25 million in unmet demand for local food in the region. And uh, we're not even close. Actually, I think, excuse me, $12 million in unmet demand. So we're not even close to meeting that. Um, and the supply was very close to exhausted, uh, at least in our outlets with the food hub this year. Um, there's really a lot of demand in the off season. So if you can provide um, high quality stuff that's not just lettuce um, in the, you know, February to April time and then from December to um, to February, basically from, from December to April, there's a real open market right there. Um, and so in terms of new businesses, I think it's a real hard failure rate because farming's hard <laughs> and climate change is making it harder. Uh, and I will say one more thing about that. And that is, you know, the age of the average age of farmers in Missouri is about 60. Um, and that's the average age of farmers in Missouri, 60 years old. So we need new farmers coming onto the scene that can sh uh, take the reins and grow food for the next generations. Are you uh, thinking about farming, Adam? Oh, no, ma'am. I'm just uh, interested in it. I, um, I've done a little bit of light volunteering at uh, Cultivate KC over in Midtown. Um, Great. But I'm just more interested in, in buying local food so I can cook it and eat it. <laughs> um, yeah. I kind have of a follow-up question to that. Um, I know there's one question in the chat, so I can wait, or I can go and ask it now if you want. And we have about oh, four for minutes. Uh, oh, okay. Do you, do you see a lot of um, education efforts in secondary schools to bring out kind of a new population of farmers, or is that something that's just not happening? Um, ag education in this country has really um, not gotten the support it needs and sort of, sort of fallen away in a lot of ways, although FFAs are still strong. They don't really teach farming, you know, like small farming. Um, it's mostly like, I'm going to raise a pig and sell it at the fair or show it at the fair or something. Um, and I don't want to downplay that. There are some very robust farming opportunities and um, learning to be had, but in the cities, it's definitely lacking so I think there's a real opportunity to get um, everybody more involved in agriculture. Right now, it's about one to two percent of the entire population is involved in growing our food. Whereas, you know, obviously 50 years ago, things or 100 years ago, things were a lot different, but there was definitely a lot more people growing their own food and, and involved in our food system. So, um, yeah, I do see a question here about baby steps um, that. Uh, that people can take for e-commerce. Like I said, you know, Square is a really easy site to set up. Um, and I wouldn't, I would say e-commerce is like thinking about it as a website. Like, so if you thought about websites 15 years ago or 20 years ago as a business, you'd be like, oh, I don't know where to start. I don't know what to do. So you would go to, um, you know, one of those platforms that made it really easy to set up a website. Um, and so that's kind of what I would say is like, you know, go to um, a site that's easy to set up and learn about how that works. You don't want to, um, you want to go to a secure website though, because um, e-commerce, there's a lot of uh, stealing of credit card numbers and stuff. So make sure that um, they're guaranteeing um, some um, security there. Um, yeah. And also like talk to other people who have websites in your peer group who have e-commerce and that'll really help um, ease some of the tension maybe and get some advice from those people. Yeah. So we're at the end of our plan time. Are there any more questions? Uh, we're really grateful that you guys joined us and uh, we'd love to stay in touch. We'll be following up with those links that are in the presentation and farm to fork info and um, have any last words, Katie? I know we're ongoing and here for, for 
for everything from West Central Missouri to Kansas City. We're really trying to build that greater Kansas City uh, rural to urban connection. So looking forward to working with you all down the road. Yeah, come to Farm to Fork. It'll be great. <laughs> okay, and stay tuned. I mentioned the Start Here Business Acceleration Network earlier and how we look at local food and farming as part of our building our rural economy. And we do have a beginning micro enterprise loan fund. We're actually trying to design some products to help farmers with things like um, uh, credit lines for planting season, things like that, that can be designed for some of our smaller farmers. So stay, stay in touch. Um, we'll have news about that too. Thanks everybody. We'll follow up by email and thank you, Katie. Good job. Yes, thanks, Patty. All right. All right. Bye, Bye, everyone.